Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Can you believe it's Wednesday already? I saw Wolfgeist comment that and I'm like, exactly, the week is going by so fast. Oh my goodness. Um, but welcome everyone. Welcome to Stitch Nation. I am Kennedy, your host. I'm the social media specialist here at SMP and I'm so excited that you guys are all here today. Um, I'm seeing lots of people in the chat all excited about today's show. So I am pumped, I'm ready got my coffee here today. No cheesecake though, Wolfgeist. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to get some eventually and I'm going to just show up just for you. <laughs> but I want to say hi to you some of this morning. Um, we've got a full house today. Very, very excited. So we have got, oh, Marianne Fox from Art Idaho. We've got Scott Gabbard. All of my friends are on. Ella Bly, congrats on winning that contest. You've got I believe you got third place at our SoFest contest. So congrats. That's so exciting. We got Tammy Barton on, Neva Larson, Tammy Langhorn. Did I see that right? Yes. And Bruce Bolton. I love it. I'm so happy you guys are all here today. Um, Cindy Ball said, I like the new intro music with the clock sound. Thank you. I really appreciate that. TikTok, it's time for Kennedy to rock. <laughs> you guys are so funny. You guys always make my day. Well, I'm very excited for today's show because I feel like we all have, you know, a, a struggle maybe a little bit with our cutting tools. You know, we have them and they get dull and you want to make them last. Everybody has that one pair of scissor, scissors that they just cannot live without and you want to make them last as long as you can. So we are here and I'm here with Fomore and I saw a lot of people in the comments saying that they have Fomore um, cutting tools and supplies. So it's so awesome that you guys are here to learn right from them themselves and learn their awesome tips and tricks. Um, so that is going to be so much fun. But I have a couple quick announcements before we go ahead and get started. Um, if you are new here and this is your first time watching an SMP live show, welcome. And also, we do this every single day. So join us every day at 10 a.m. PST. We always have some awesome education going on, um, some really great guests. It's it's always so much fun. We have a little party here every morning. So, and I know it's all different times of the day. So it's really awesome that you guys all join in and from all over, all over the world, all over the country. It's so great. And I even saw some people getting connected because they live close to each other. So it's so awesome. Um, it's just, I'm like so excited for today's show. But with that, I just want to let you know about the shows. Yes, we have them going on every single day. We have a really awesome set up and the rest of the show line up for the rest of the week. We've got Laura Star coming in tomorrow and we've got your guys' favorite Callista from Wonderful coming back with another thread series and some awesome thread education. So very, very stoked for that. It's going to be an awesome show again. And you guys have really been enjoying that thread series. So it just makes me so happy and I'm sure it really makes um, Callista happy as well because we just, we want to get you the best thread education out there, right? Right? <laughs> It's awesome, but I look, I'm seeing the chat going crazy. I'm trying to read all your guys' comments. Um, 
Yes, glad to get some hints. Barb said, glad to get some hints on how to preserve my sewing cutting tools. Exactly. Because we invest in these tools and we want them to last and we want to get the most, you know, bang for our buck, right? So it's just really great to find some new tips and techniques on how to improve the longevity of your tools. So very, very great. Very awesome. Um, Coffee Powered Home said, I love crafting puns. Me too. If you guys have any other crafting puns, please let me know because I feel like I only have a couple and I just want to, I want to get some more out there. Um, so yeah, very exciting, very exciting. But before I also bring them on, I just want to let you know that we do have an email list. So if you guys are looking to get more connected with SMP, we have an email list that shares all the happenings going on with SMP, as well as awesome deals and specials that we have going on throughout the week. So definitely head to our website and you'll see the little drop down menu. And also it's all the way at the bottom of the website as well. So you can sign up, just put your email in and it'll, it'll get you some connections into SMP. And also if you're signed up, you'll be there's also special things going on. You might get some get some perks. You never know. So that's very exciting. And also with SoFest coming to a close last week, we also have our next week-long event. We've got Countdown to Christmas. We've got Cyber Monday. As long with along with our shows, we just we're we're getting all these shows out there for you. And we're so excited to share all of the fun things that we've got going on. And, and also, I believe, let's think, let's think. I think. Yeah, so Callista's show, we've got it this Friday, and then also our last one, sad, will be next Friday. Wolf Guy said, Kennedy's birthday. That is, if you guys are looking to tune into Cyber Monday, join us. It's going to be a party. It's my birthday. So we're going to have a fun, a fun time on Cyber Monday. It's going to be great. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on. I hope you guys are having fun with all these education and all these classes. Um, we had So Steady on Monday, and they really went into some awesome offcuts and applique tips and tricks. So it's really been awesome. All you guys, <laughs> thank you guys for all the early birthday wishes. We've got a while, but <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it for now. I'm really excited for today's show. Let me say hi to some more of you guys. Good morning, Roxanne, Van Gelder, Christy Gray, Arnell Burroughs said she loved all five days of SoFest. We are so happy that you did. It was so fun on our side as well. And I loved seeing all of our familiar faces on the stream. It was so great. Renee McFarland. I know Renee. She is local. I Fun fact, I used to work at the um, San Marcos retail store. So I used to see Renee all the time. She's wonderful. Um, and also I see some other familiar faces. Carol Lombardi. She asked, have you all recovered at SMP? I think so. Kyle, have we all recovered from not SoFest? Yet. Kyle said, not yet. We're, we're getting there. A couple more days and we'll be fine. <laughs> What day is Cyber Monday? Cyber Monday will be Monday, November 28th, and we are doing a full day of live streams. It won't be a week long like we how we normally do our big events, but it'll be a one day live stream filled with, I think we're going to do every 15 minutes we're swapping and doing a different demo. So isn't that exciting? It's going to be quick and right to the point with all of the fun machines and things that we have in store for you. So it's very, very exciting. And Cyber Monday also, you know, it has great deals and Cyber Monday is an awesome day to get all of your new products. So definitely stick around for that and hang out with us on Cyber Monday. It's going to be awesome. Let's see. I got some more comments and Celeste said, can't wait for Quilt Fest. I know we've got them. We're already going to start. It's already in the works. We're already starting to talk about it. So we're just, we're just pushing all these events for you guys to make sure that you guys are staying on top of all the latest trends and all the latest sewing news and happenings with the machines and all that stuff going on. Um, so it's very exciting. I'm just, I'm stoked. It's going to be really great, but let's get to today. So today, like I said, we've got Fomore in the house and it is going to be such an awesome show. We've got Brent from Fomore coming in to share that his tips and techniques on making your cutting tools last and also they're going to be showing you some new products I believe so we're super excited for that and I believe they are almost ready so we will see if they're almost there but with that I'm very excited for today's show make sure you guys stick around for um, we've got some giveaways at the end of today's show and if you have any questions that you want to ask Brent along the way make sure you type them in the chat and I will make note and we can do some Q&A's at the end and also if um, you have any questions about products today we are um, just 
drop the comment down below and I'll be able to answer them. And we also have Fomori on the chat as well. So if you have any questions, we'll be there to answer for you and help you out. All right, you guys. Well, I think we might be ready to go ahead and get started. Let's see if Fomori and Brent are ready. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. All righty. Are they here? Hello. How are you? Quiet on the set. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yes, it's me, Brent no, Benitza, also known as the Scissor Man, coming to you live from Gainesville, Georgia. How's the weather in California? Oh my gosh, it's great. How's the weather over there? I'm sorry, you just that just made me laugh so hard. I love that little intro you just did. That was awesome. <laughs> you like my shirt? <laughs> I do. I was before we got on, I was gonna ask what's what's the pattern going on? What what's going on there? Hey, this is the Golden Girls. Oh my gosh. I was gonna guess. I was gonna ask and see if it was the Golden Girls, but I said maybe my eyes are just deceiving me. But I love your shirt. I grew up watching Golden Girls, so I just I love that you're wearing this shirt today. I love it so much. <laughs> well, th this is this is kind of a, a tradition whenever we do these lives because you know, uh, Sewing Machines Plus is a great friend of the industry, and uh, thank you for being that friend. And for all those that are watching right now, uh, thank you as well because without you. Uh, Sewing Machines Plus or Fomori wouldn't be here. So thank you exactly. for everybody out there that's participating in this and for loving their crafting. Of course. Well, Brent, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away. I'm seeing the comments right now and everybody says that he fits right in with SMP Nation. So we're very excited to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm will scared. go ahead and let you take it away and get started with all the things you've got. And I will chat with you in a little bit. Sounds good, Kennedy. Okay, everybody. Hi, my name is Brent Benitza. For those of you that don't know me out there, also known as the Scissor Man. Over 25 years ago, I created Fomori Cutlery and uh, I, with the mission statement of creating the highest quality tool at the most affordable price with exceptional customer service. And with the help of my team uh, and my vision, that's exactly what we have created. And uh, we're going to go over some of those services that we provide here with our products. And uh, again, if any of you out there have any questions about anything, uh, we've got Marissa here moderating the questions. Uh, please pipe in uh, and I'll be more than happy to answer anything that I can answer for you. Uh, for those of you that do know me, I'm a hugger and this is quite weird because uh, it's just there. Anyway, but uh, let's get to it. So Fomori is a manufacturer of uh, Precision Instruments, we've been manufacturing, like I said, for over 25 years. And uh, uh, most of the products that we produce uh, are from the demands of the customer like yourself, uh, wanting something better or improved or different. Um, we do have a lot of the products that are both wanted and needed, um, and we'll go over some of that as well. But what I wanna kind of discuss really quick is the difference between a right-handed pair of scissors and a left-handed pair of scissors. How many of you out there are left-handed that are using right-handed scissors? Uh, how, many, how many people are out there right-handed that are using left-handed scissors? Hello? Um, how do you tell a difference between a right-handed scissor and a left-handed scissor? And question, can you use are they ambidextrous? Is a right-handed scissor also a left-handed scissor and vice versa? Uh, anybody have that answer? No? Okay. Uh, so the answer is no. There is no such thing as an ambidextrous scissor. It's either right-handed or it's left-handed. And we're going to show you the differences. Uh, the only time it doesn't matter is when there's, not, when there's no holes for your fingers to go in. So something like this here doesn't know if you're right-handed or left-handed, but we're gonna go over that. So the first thing I want to do is how do you identify a right-handed scissor from a left-handed scissor? Some people say it's the handle. That's a very small part of it. So whenever you open the scissor up and if the inside blade or your right blade comes up, it's a right-handed scissor. No matter how you turn it, that inside blade comes up. If it's a left-handed scissor, 
Oh, just <laughs> if it's a left-handed scissor. The outside blade, I'm sorry, the outside blade comes up. So again, on a right-handed scissor, the inside blade comes up. On the right-handed scissor, the outside blade comes up. Now, why is that important? For those of you that quilt, right-handed people, when we measure, we measure from left to right. Left-handed people measure from right to left. Now, let me show you that really quick. One of the rulers that I really like is Quilter Select. Uh, they make both left and right-handed. Uh, so it goes right-handed one way, left-handed the next. But if I'm going to be cutting this, and I'm going to be using, and if I'm right-handed, show you this really quick. And if I'm right-handed, I take that scissor and I look straight and I get on the right side of that cutting line I'm looking straight down and I'm cutting on the left side or the right side of that cutting line, which is easy. There's no shadows being casted on the fabric. I can see that cutting line quite easily. If I'm left-handed using a right-handed scissor, now I kind of have to hold myself over to this side and I have to apply a pressure to get these to cut and it's not so comfortable. Now, let me explain that to you. All scissors, I don't care what brand or who makes them or where they come from, that top blade or that top handle controls that bottom blade. The bottom handle controls the top blade. So when I put my right hand into the scissor, I'm naturally applying pressure with my thumb for that bottom blade to go that way. And I'm naturally applying pressure with these fingers for the top blade to go that way, so I get those two blades to meet. If I put this in my left hand, now I'm opposing the blades. I'm putting pressure with my uh, left thumb for that blade to go that way and the top bl uh, blade to go that way. So whenever I go to cut with it, it just folds the fabric. Unless I apply a pressure, and if you're left-handed out there using a right-handed scissor, you know the pain that's associated with cutting with uh, the improper scissor. But with a left-handed scissor, I don't have to apply any of that pressure. I cut on the left side of that cutting line, looking straight down, and it'll cut like a hot knife through butter. So how do you tell you're left-handed from right-handed? Open them up. So again, if that inside blade comes up or the right blade comes up, it's a right-handed scissor. If you open it up and that left blade or the outside blade comes up, it's a left-handed scissor. And remember, there is no such thing as an ambidextrous scissor. It's either right-handed or it's left-handed. Now, Fomori is proud to be one of the largest left-handed manufacturers in the industry. We have more left-handed uh, categories than any other manufacturer, and I'm very proud to say that. Um, some of the products that we, that we have right now uh, are the eight-inch fabric shear. We're coming out with a six-inch fabric shear. We've got a six-inch straight trimmer left-handed. We have our uh, six-inch duckbill applique scissor. We have the six inch duckbill applique scissor without the duckbill. And we have the little mini duckbill. This is a really fun scissor, folks. It only has a half inch wide duckbill on it, a very short blade, large finger grips. So for those really intricate, uh, detailed applique in the hoop applique projects you have, this is a must have. It's the 712 MD. P, we have it both in uh, left-handed and we have it in right-handed. And everything that we have left-handed, we do have right-handed, by the way. Um, then we also have the uh, 712D, which is the mini duckbell. Um, uh, and then we have our wonderful 
micro tip scissor coming very soon in the left-handed version. If you look at these tips, you can see that they're really, really super fine. So for those real intricate detail, for those really intricate detail cut work, this is a phenomenal scissor. Uh, those tips are little needles. And just to show you how well they cut, uh, there you go. So just those tips, you can see this like a hot knife through butter. And if you're just trimming those micro threads, look at that. So again, those are coming in left-handed very, very soon. Um, we also have our in-the-hoop applique scissors, left-handed, uh, without the duck bill. So you can get real, real close to those real intricate designs in that hoop, get as close to those seams without cutting into the seam. Uh, then we have just our large ring four inch curved embroidery scissor. Um, this is when everybody knows. This is the six inch uh, in the hoop, over the hoop applique scissor um, for machine applique. Great scissor, now coming left-handed. And the 732 micro serrated. This is a great scissor for your wools, your canvases, your fleece, your flannels. Uh, it's got a really nice micro serrated edge. Uh, a little razor blade with handles, that's coming left-handed as well. So we're very excited to be bringing all of these left-handed scissors to you um, very, very soon. We'll have the uh, complete uh, edition uh, with everything else. Logistics is a little bit uh, crazy right now. But uh, again, left-handed, right-handed. Don't forget, if you are left-handed out there and you're using right-handed product, um, it takes a little bit of getting used to uh, because you don't have to apply that certain pressure with your scissors to get them to cut. Most of the left-handed people that I talk to, uh, when I ask them, do your hands hurt after you've cut you know, for a while, they all say, yes, you get that pain right in your thumb. You'll never get that pain again with our scissors. Um, one of the things we get asked a lot here is how do you take care of your scissors? You know, for more, when I started this company, I wanted to create the highest quality tool at the most affordable price with exceptional customer service. And I just didn't want people to buy their scissors. I wanted them to be able to cherish their scissors. Scissors are an heirloom product. Uh, they get handed down from generation to generation. Uh, and we wanted that same with our brand as well. Any Fomori scissor, you know, nothing will stay sharp forever. Uh, you can ask my ex-wife, she'll tell you that. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but when they start to go dull, uh, or if they start to skip a little bit, it's not that difficult. Go to our website, you send them back to us, we sharpen them, we send them back to you for as long as you own them. And to learn more about that, you can go to our website at famcut.com. That's F-A-M-C-U-T. Dot com. And that and uh, also uh, our rotary blades that we'll be talking about because our rotary blades come with that same sharpening service. But we'll, uh, we'll go with that. So how do you know when a scissor is ready to be sharpened? Well, whenever your scissor starts to push the fabric too much, um, let me see if I can get this to, to push or, or if it's, I'm going to get it to bend or... <laughs> trying to spread the blades here, or if it folds like this, it's time to get them sharpened. Um, now, what's really important is finding a sharpener that understands your scissor. Um, there's different kinds of edges that are put on scissors. Uh, there's beveled edges, there's semi-beveled uh, semi edges. Uh, you know, your high-end beauty product, you've got convex edges and semi-convex edges. You've got knife, uh, knife edges, which are two different degrees of uh, cutting blades, uh, angles on your blades. Uh, you also have what we call a, uh, a razor edge uh, for whenever you're wanting to you know, rip your fabrics. So a razor edge, you should be able to just cut like that. Um, and that's a razor edge uh, shear. 
then there's microserrated um, and microserrations. How do you get them sharpened? Well, there's only a few sharpeners I know in this country that know how to do micro serrations. Uh, we're proud to say that we are one of those uh, and we can serrate any scissor that we have. So if you've got a scissor that you're wanting a micro serrated edge for, uh, definitely call us up or send us an email and we can do that. Now, what's the advantage of a micro serrated versus a non micro serrated? Sebastian, can I get you to get me a uh, serrated shear? That uh, 732, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, like a 739 would be would be awesome. So I know micro serrations are, are been a big talk in the quilting world, uh, primarily for applique. Um, why would you want a serrated scissor over a non-serrated scissor? Um, serrated scissors tend to grab the fabric and hold the fabric a little bit better uh, than a non-serrated scissor. And let me show you that really quick. So this is our 739. Uh, it's got a rubber handle to it, so it's nice and comfortable. Uh, but that bottom blade, if you can see that, has got micro serrations on it. So what I wanna show you, whenever I close this scissor, if you notice, it didn't push the scissor, or it didn't push the fabric out of that cutting edge. When I use a non-serrated scissor, watch what happens. You see how it pushed it before it started to cut? You get a little bit of a push right there at the beginning. Whereas a non, whereas a micro serrated, you don't get that push at all. And you get that little extra cut. So if you're wanting something that uh, grabs the fabric or grabs your thread and not push it, that's when a serrated edge is important. Serrated edges also tend to uh, last a little bit longer than a non-serrated edge, but there are some disadvantages. Some people think that it leaves a little fray on the, on the edge of their fabrics. So if that's something that's important to you, then a non-serrated scissor is the way to go. Um, cleaning your scissors. It's very important that after you're done using your shear, that you take a soft cotton cloth and wipe that scissor clean. What happens is, if you can see this, so there's already some fibers on that blade from what we've just cut. So take a soft cotton cloth, wipe those blades clean. If you use your scissors weekly, Lubricate your scissors daily. If you loop, if you use your scissors daily, or sorry, if you use your scissors daily, lubricate them weekly. If you use your scissors weekly, lubricate them monthly. You can use any kind of penetrating oil. We have our own uh, blended mineral oil that we use uh, for the scissors. But what you want to do is you just want to put a small drop right down into the pivot area, open and close them several times, get that oil right down into that pivot of that screw area. So what happens is, and then what you want to do is just run a small bead up that blade, turn it over, do the same thing here, and right around that screw area. All right, so then what you want to do is just open and close that scissor many, many times. Wipe those blades clean. So what happens? If you live in a humid climate, or if you've ever seen an older pair of scissors, I know we go to the antique stores, maybe a, a yard sale or whatever, and you see a, a nice old scissor. When you look at it, it tarnishes or starts rusting from the inside out. What happens is, is the humidity, whenever you're cutting, will get those fibers trapped in the pivot and wrapped around that screw. And if you ever start to hear your scissors squeak or squawk, it's time that you lubricate them. You got two pieces of metal here uh, that are rubbing together uh, and stuff happens. 
uh, dust particles from the air will get trapped on there. Uh, fibers from your fabric get trapped in there and, and can cause premature rusting. Uh, and that's something you do not want to do. So again, if you use your scissors daily, lubricate them weekly. If you use your scissors weekly, lubricate them monthly. You can use any kind of penetrating oil. If you don't have one, again, uh, Pomori has our uh, lubricate, the uh, special blended lubricant. Uh, but again, you can use any penetrating lubricant that, that you want. What you do want to do, though, is make sure that you wipe that scissor completely dry before you uh, cut anything like a silk or a chiffon. You don't want to get any oil on that expensive fabric. Um, so that's cleaning and uh, maintenancing your scissor. The one thing that people will try to do is they'll try to readjust or tighten or loosen the screw of the scissor. You really don't want to do that. You want to find a uh, uh, somebody that's a specialist in this, finding a local sharpener or uh, somebody that knows how to balance your scissors properly. One thing I want to show you really quick, if you can see, all quality scissors are made with a bit of a gap in between the scissor. Can you see that? So you should be able to hold your scissor up, see a gap from here, then you see the screw, and then you'll see a gap all the way up to that tip. When you open the scissor and you follow that gap, only a small part of that blade is making connection uh, with the fabric. And it's a, that little uh, part of that blade that's doing the cut work. Um, if you drop your scissors, uh, sometimes it'll bow them out and then they'll have to be rehammered uh, if they can be. Uh, re-straightened uh, to get that right bend back in there. Um, but as you can see. Can you use aluminum foil to sharpen your scissors? Can you use, who said that? A lot of people. A lot of people said that. Yeah. Whoever, I would love to meet the guy or the gal that said use aluminum foil to sharpen your scissors. No, do not use aluminum foil to sharpen your scissors. Aluminum is a metal. Um, metal with metal is not a good thing. Uh, so. No, do not use aluminum foil to sharpen your scissors. If you have a home sh uh, a knife sharpener, please don't use your knife sharpeners to sharpen your scissors. If you have a home scissor sharpening, not a good idea. Uh, if, you, if it's just a paper scissor, that's fine. Uh, but if it's a precision cutting instrument, please don't use those. Uh, take it to a professional or send them to us. We'd be more than happy to get them uh, in tip top shape for you. Um, what else? Glass. <laughs> Glass. <laughs> All right. So again, cleaning your scissors, lubricating your scissors, very important. What do we got there? How do you care for pinking shears? How do you care for pinking shears? And can they be sharpened? Yes. And do they come in left-handed? Uh, 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 want to grab me a quick pinking shear? So for pinking shears, pinking shears are uh, a quite unique animal. For those of you that got pinking shears at home, one of the biggest complaints I get about pinking shears is how tight they are. Can you loosen them up? No, don't try loosening those pinking shears. Pinking shears are like a puzzle. Each one of those te uh, teeth have to fit into that uh, the, the, the groove of it very, very precisely, and it has to make connection. Um, so uh, those teeth have to go in between each other at a right tension to be able to get it to cut. Um, and if you mess with that tension, it can be quite miserable to get that tension back. Can pinking shears be sharpened? Yes, pinking shears can be sharpened, but unlike a scissor, a pinking shear can only be sharpened a few times before it has to be replaced. How can you tell if your pinking shear can be sharpened. Sebastian, I'm going to give this pinking shear to you and I want you to show the inside of those teeth. If you see, if you can see this, you can see that there's a coloration on that blade. Uh, so you've got a light color here and then you've got a darker color in the back there. Once you get to that darker color, it's over. The pinking shear has to be replaced. Um, so uh, 
it can't be sharpened beyond that point. Um, Left-handed pinking shears. Uh, obviously, this is a right-handed pinking shear because that right blade comes up no matter how I turn it. Do we, man do we make a left-handed pinking shear? The answer is no. Uh, pinking shears, uh, it it's very special machinery that is very, very expensive. And I don't know uh, there are I don't know of any true left-handed pinking shears out there right now. I think Ginger may make a pair. Um, I would test the quality before you take them home. Uh, so definitely I, I would request to cut with them before you take them home uh, just to make sure that it's to, the satis to, to your satisfaction. Um, so if you need a left-handed pinking shear, there are left, uh, there are pinking blades, uh, rotary blades that have uh, scallop shears and pinking uh, cuts on them. Definitely, I would I would go with that if you really need a left-handed pinking shear. Um, so uh, now let's kind of talk about uh, rotary blades for a second. So Fomore is very proud to say uh, that we are the first for two things here. We are the first ones that have developed a solid tungsten carbide rotary blade. Tungsten carbide is uh, four times harder uh, than uh, titanium, five times harder than stainless steel. Uh, there's, very, there's no flexibility in this blade at all. You see that? And it's really, really shiny. And we also manufacture uh, our regular blades, what we call the uh, uh, domestic blade, uh, so this is more of our industrial blade, and this is our domestic blade. So this is made out of an SKS high-speed Japanese stainless steel. Uh, but can you see that? So that's our SKS-7. Uh, the skew on it is uh, 400 SK. The tungsten carbide is 400 TC, tungsten carbide. So like I was saying just a minute ago, Tungsten carbide is four times harder than titanium. Think about that. Five times harder than steel. The only thing harder than tungsten carbide is a diamond. Um, and that's exactly what we sharpen these with is the diamond. Sharp, did I say sharpen? Yes. So Fomore is the very first brand that promotes a, a professional resharpening service for your rotary blades. What do you do with all those blades when you're done with them? I know a lady that literally has a drawer full of used blades. She doesn't want to throw them out because how do, how do you get rid of them? On the back of all of Fomori's rotary blades, you will see a sticker that says, retain this container for future sharpening services, www.famcut.com. That's right. You can professionally get your rotary blades re-edged better than new. Now let's talk about the tungsten carbide really quick. Now, I just wanna show you our blades fit most handles out there. We've tried all the major handles out there and they work. Why tungsten carbide? When I developed the tungsten carbide blade, I developed it more for the uh, uh, costume industry uh, because the costume industry uses primarily synthetic fabrics for their costumes. And if you've cut with synthetic fabrics, you know uh, it plays havoc on any kind of blade. Um, but if you're one of those quilters or sewers or uh, DIYers that don't like having to change your blade after at the end of every quilt or at the end of every project, this tungsten carbide blade is amazing. Um, it's the only blade on the market that will cut Kevlar. Kevlar is the uh, material that is in bulletproof vests. Um, but again, just to show you really quick, this is a um, uh, brocade fabric. It's a very uh, tricky fabric to cut because of all of the metallic threads that are in it. But just to show you really quick, I'm gonna go through all those, goes through it very, very easily. So whether, whether it is a synthetic fabric or if it's an organic fabric, it doesn't matter. Or if it's a faux fur, and if you've ever cut with cuddle, 
this thing is amazing. But look at that. Um, or vinyls. Yes, you can do your vinyls with this. Marine vinyls as well. And leathers. So this is a very stiff belt leather. Uh, just to show you really quick how well this cuts. Just like that. The blade will last you four times longer than any other rotary blade on the market. Uh, again, nothing will stay sharp forever, but if you ever need it to be sharpened, rest assured, Bomori's here to get you right back in business. Um, our regular blades. Can the regular blade do everything that the tungsten carbide blade would do? Absolutely. Will it stay as sharp as long? Answer is no. But, rest, but again, even with our regular blades, we sharpen them for as long as you own them. So if you don't, uh, if you're one that doesn't mind replacing your blades often, uh, this is the way to go. Now, uh, how do you compare our blades to other blades is a question I get a lot. Um, folks, when we came out with the uh, blades, I wanted something that was sh a, a bit sharper than what was currently on the market. Um, and we have a proprietary compound that we use when we manufacture these, when we're, do when we're polishing the edges that give them a little bit more of a edge than our competitors, no pun intended. Uh, will this blade do everything? Yes. Now our blades will last you three times, four times longer than any other blade that you have on the market right now. So if you're using like an endurance blade, um, I've had customers that say they use their endurance blades for about three weeks. Um, our customers are saying, those same customers are saying that the, our regular blade is just as sharp, if not sharper as the endurance and lasting twice as long. Uh, but just to show you there, this is the, uh, the and again, if you've got, uh, uh, what did I do with it? Uh, I was looking for the uh, home deck fabric, but this is leather. And this, again, this is our regular blade. And I wanna uh, show you something that's very impressive. So here, this is leather. No fringes. This is a, uh, a home deck kind of fabric, cuts it very easily. Go right back to your organics, not an issue whatsoever. And just to show you how sharp these blades are. So this is 20 layers of 100% cotton muslin. And we're gonna do it with both blades. And then we're gonna talk about handles. So 20 layers. Does your rotary cutter cut through 20 layers? Let's see, we're gonna start off with the uh, tungsten carbide blade. We're gonna make sure that this is on here really nice, secure. Little bit more pressure. But there's 20 blades, uh, 20 layers. Now, will our regular blades cut through the 20 layers? Absolutely. Um, the price of the uh, rotary blades. So our regular blade, the one I'm using here, comes in a two pack. Oh, I didn't press hard enough. Comes in a two pack. There we go. Cut, comes in a two, two blade pack. You can see those edges nice and clean. So two blades come in this pack. One blade comes in the tungsten carbide uh, pack. So you get one blade with the tungsten carbide or two blades with the SKS-7. Um, our handles. Okay, so do we have handles for our rotary blades? The answer is yes. Do we physically have them? No, not yet. They should be here by the middle or late of October. Um, 
but what makes our handle different than the handles that are on the market? So not only did I want to create a sharper, more durable blade that will last twice as long as any other blade that you've used out there, uh, or in the tungsten carbide four times longer than any other blade, we wanted something special with the handle as well. Um, this is going to be our handle. Um, and the only thing that's missing is a little rubber bubble here that will be used for removing uh, the, the, uh, the screw to replace the handle. But what makes the blade rotate on your handle? It's the pressure that you're putting down on the fabric and on your cutting mat, right? Watch this. So if you can see this, when I go to push with this, that blade is not rotating. It will rotate once I put pressure on that blade. With the Fomori handle, you can see it doesn't need any pressure whatsoever to get those to rotate. So what we've done is there's little ball bearings on the inside of our handle where this screw goes. Um, and what those ball bearings do is it, it rotates the blade. So you put less drag uh, on the blade and you put less pressure. So your cutting mats will last twice as long and your blades will last twice as long. Now caring for your rotary blades and your cutters. If you can see this, this is uh, the inside part Of the rotary blade. So just like your scissors, fabric gets built up on the inside. And if you can see the inside so of the guard where the handle is. So fabric gets built up inside there. And if you don't clean that out, uh, especially if you're cutting stuff like a uh, uh, faux fur or a minky fabric uh, that sheds, it can put pressure up against there and cause your blades to skip. Um, when you're done with your rotary blades, take your rotary blades apart and carefully wipe them with a cotton cloth. And you always want to pull away. You never want to go against the, uh, the, the edge. You always want to go away from it. Clean it just like that. And you're ready to go and you're back in business. Um, yes. Can tungsten be nicked and how many times can you resharpen blades? Can tungsten be nicked and how many times can you sharpen it? So let's talk about tungsten carbide really quick. Tungsten carbide, uh, for those of you that know anything about tools, you've got drill bits that are made out of tungsten carbide uh, for drilling really, really hard stuff. Uh, tungsten carbide, takes a lot to get nicked. Um, just to show you, uh, uh, Julie Luma from uh, Off the Wall Quilts, uh, uh, if, you, if you know Off the Wall Quilts, I was at a show at, at one day and she was there and I asked her, I said, how many blades do you go through uh, in your demonstrations uh, in a day? Uh, she said, I go through three blades a day. I said, three a day? She goes, well, the blades, nick the or hit the acrylic rulers and can nick the blade so she said how does it do on acrylic i said well i don't know so what we actually did is we act we, we actually took and and whacked whacked that blade up against there we went over the ruler uh, several times uh, just to see how it did um and let's just see what we've done to our blade here So can it be nicked? It can be. Takes a little bit more uh, pressure, I guess you'd say, uh, to nick it. Um, if you did nick it, though, rest assured, we're here. So tungsten carbide being five times harder than stainless steel, four times harder than titanium. Steel is measured on a Rockwell hardness um, scissors. Uh, all of our scissors are at a 55 plus on the Rockwell. Uh, 
all quality scissors are at a 52 to a 55. Uh, anything lower than that, the steel is just too soft and the edges don't stay sharp very long. They go dull very quick. Um, why, so our blades, the, uh, the SKS 7 blades are at a 65 Rockwell. The Rockwell hardness on our tungsten carbide is 85 plus. Now, for those of you out there that understand steel uh, or know the molecular structure of steel, at 85 plus, that's very hard steel. There is no flexibility to this blade whatsoever. It does not bend. With your regular blades, you can bend them, and maybe you've seen them bend when you're using them. Uh, so advantages, disadvantages. For everything great, there's something bad. For everything, you know, for something bad, there's maybe hopefully something good. You drop this blade, it's not going to break. Uh, and if, if you, it have to be dropped from a very high surface. The harder the steel, the more brittle the blade can be. For a professional user, somebody that understands the quality of cutting mats and understands the, quali uh, the quality of their tools. Um, if you're just starting out with rotary blades, I probably wouldn't recommend the tungsten carbide to you. Um, again, the cutting mats play a big role in it, and I'll, I'll explain that to you here in a second. Um, but if you were to drop this, it could shatter like like glass i've seen six thousand dollar beauty shears uh shatter like glass at a, at a beauty show platform artist was doing a, a demonstration somebody bumped into her uh and the the scissor came out of her hand and just shattered six thousand dollars for a pair of scissors um but if you just nick the blade uh or if it eventually goes dull i can get about six sharpenings before you have to replace it uh, same with your regular blades. Uh, do, does Pomori sharpen other brands? Absolutely. Because we manufacture our product, we understand the nuances of, uh, of products. So if you've got a pair of scissors out there that you've loved or cherished or an heirloom that you'd like somebody to take a look at, you can give us a call or send us an email. Send them to us. We'll be more than happy to take a look at them for you and uh, uh, tell you how much it is. Uh, to sharpen our scissors, it's a dollar uh, an inch, and that's from tip to handle. We have to sharpen both blades, so it's an easy way to measure them. So it's just a dollar an inch plus shipping and handling. Uh, for the rotary blades, uh, it's three dollars, uh, four dollars uh, for the first blade, um, and we have some tier pricing if you've got multiple blades. Uh, so definitely go to our website to learn more about all that. Uh, what makes a quality rotary blade? Now, rotary blades pricing is all over the board, folks. You can go on Amazon and you can buy a, a, a blade for a dollar. Um, be careful with that. Um, a lot of the material isn't, it's either so recycled that it's too impure and it just won't keep an edge or even take an edge. Um, but Go with your go with your named quality products. Uh, again, uh, you know, Ofa's, uh, Martelli's uh, uh, are, are, de are decent blades. But again, there's uh, Kai's. There's a lot of good quality blades out there. And if you want to get your blade sharpened and if you've got a stack of them, make sure they're a quality blade. I've had some people send me some uh, off-brand blades or no-name blades brand that just would not even burr up. So be very uh, conscious of what you're buying. Nothing good is cheap and nothing cheap is good, right? Uh, so cutting mats. Um, do we have a cutting mat yet? Uh, we're getting close. Uh, I am, this This is probably going to be the, uh, the, the cutting mat. We're working on grid lines right now for the tungsten carbide because tungsten carbide is so sharp. Uh, it, it, if you've got a cheap cutting mat, it can put a, uh, it can put some grooves in that cutting mat. Um, but when I, one thing I want to convey, folks, when you use your cutting mats, clean them. How many of you out there clean your cutting mats? 
what you want to do is you want to take some uh, mild soap and warm water, take the back end of an SOS pad uh, or uh, a, a sponge scouring pad and do small circles on that cutting mat. If you notice that your blade's starting to skip or leave that little thread behind, uh, before you change that blade, clean the mat. Because what happens is, is fibers get trapped in those little grooves in that cutting mat, and it could be causing your blade to skip. So before you change the blade, clean your mat. And uh, make sure that you use a good quality mat. A single layer or a single ply mat uh, are your lower end mats. I would definitely go with either a two or three ply cutting mat. Um, Again, there's a lot of ones out there. If you have any questions that you'd want to ask, you can send us an email. Uh, I can help guide you into a good quality cutting mat. Uh, but again, uh, as, as important of the quality of the steel is in the rotary blade, the quality of that cutting mat plays just as a big of a role uh, in the longevity of your blades. Um, let's see. Should you oil your blades? Should you oil your blades? Good question. <laughs> Thanks for asking that question. Um, we, how many of you out there have gotten your rotary blades, you open them up and they're full of oil? All of them, um, except the tungsten carbide. Why? Rotary blades are made out of a high carbon stainless steel. Uh, the higher the carbon, the harder the steel is. The lower the carbon, the softer the steel is. So carbon rusts. Um, and if you ever notice... Uh, uh, when you get your blades, they are oily. Just make sure you wipe them clean. Um, once you've wiped it clean, you shouldn't have to oil your blade. Your blades, uh, you, you, most people don't keep their blade that long. If you send them back to us to get them sharpened, when we send them back to you, we are going to oil them uh, just to keep them so they don't rust. If you do notice rusting on your blades, throw them away. Once rust starts, we can take it off, but it comes right back. Um, so uh, if you do want to keep your blades for a long period of time, then keep them oiled. So what I always tell people, like two blades come in our, our SKS 7 blade. Um, when, you put, when you take that blade out uh, to put it on your blade, whenever it starts to go dull and you put it back in the container, just put a little bit of oil on it, put it back in that send it back to us. We'll wipe it clean before we edge it and we'll re-oil them when we send them back to you. So great question. Yes. So the only time you should oil your blades is when you take the blade off, when it's dull, if you're wanting to preserve it uh, and send it back to us for sharpening, uh, then do so uh, in that manner. Any other questions? No? We have a very special department here. It's called the Department of Hugs and Cuddles. <laughs> and and little Zuzu here wanted to say hi to everybody. So so, hi. She's our mascot. Um, if you ever come out to Georgia, come by, stop by, say hi, uh, and and get the love of little Zuzu uh, here for Maury Cutlery. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Oh boy, they're rolling in. <laughs> they want to see what's behind. They want to see what's behind me. Well, so we've got our right. Uh, so the product, this is just a very small percentage of the product that we have. To see all the products and services that we have, go to famcut.com uh, to learn more. Uh, over here is our left-handed series. And over here is our right-handed series. Um, and just so people can see the differences. So this is our uh, SKS7. This is the two-pack. This is the tungsten carbide pack. So those are the rotary blades. Anything particular somebody's wanting to see? How do you get rid of your blades? So if you want, if you have blades that you're just wanting to throw away, Take them to a recycle center. Uh, please don't throw them in the landfills. Um, even a dull blade can have a very sharp edge on it and uh, uh, can be quite dangerous. Um, find, a, uh, find a container uh, to put them in, a Tupperware container or something like that, and take them to your local recycle center, a recycling center. They'd be more than happy to take them off your hands. Maybe get a couple of pennies for them.
They want to see your big scissors. They want to see the big scissor? Yeah. So this is uh, this is an actual working pair of scissors. <laughs> um, we use this for uh, uh, photo ops uh, whenever we do shows and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's heavy. <laughs> Brent, I just have to say, I loved your demo today and I love those scissors. I just, this whole show today has been so much fun and our comment section has just been going crazy. I'm sure Marissa has been seeing all of the comments here, but they just loved you so much and they're so happy to be here and they love the puppy coming on and stealing the show. <laughs> well, she steals everybody's heart. Yes. <laughs> No, that is so awesome. And I was, I had questions ready, but you answered pretty much all of them. So, I mean, I've, all I have to say is we just, we love you over here at SMP and all of the SMP nation is just really loving all of the amazing tips and tricks that you had for them today. So thank you so much, Brent. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> well, I will say, um, you know, the, the, the founders of uh, Sewing Machines Plus, I know very well. And uh, the family is an incredible family. And folks, if you're looking for quality products, uh, at, at a great price with exceptional customer service, Sewing Machines Plus is a dynamic entity. Uh, they're a great friend of this industry, and uh, I'm very proud and very honored to be a part of this. So thank you very much. Of course, of course. No, and I mean, even the second I saw you with the Golden Girl shirt on, I said, oh, this is going to go great. This is going to be perfect. So I just love it. And everybody's saying, um, where do you have any social media? Do you have any Facebook pages or anything like that where they can catch up with you after the show? Absolutely. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, not Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok. TikTok. You're on TikTok? TikTok. Oh my gosh. <laughs> TikTok to I love to go watch your guys' videos. Oh my goodness. We'll have to follow you guys on there. Um, but that's awesome. You guys heard it here. They're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So go check them out. They're so awesome. Well, okay, Brent, I know you're probably busy getting to work and figuring some new products out and releasing some new ones. And I know they're all very excited for your handles coming out soon. So I will go ahead and let you go. But thank you so much. And we've got some giveaways to do. But again, thank you so much, Brent. You're you're the best. Kennedy? Yes. Okay. Everybody watching on the count of three, we're going to do this together. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's not Happy my birthday, birthday quite yet. Dear Kennedy. Happy birthday to you. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. All right. Have a sharp so day, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Have a sharp day. Thank you so much, Brent. And shout out to Sebastian for being an awesome cameraman. <laughs> worked Thank very you. hard. Marissa. And Marissa. Yes, the whole crew. <laughs> Thank you All guys right. so much. Oh, my gosh. Have a great Bye rest guys. of your week and a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Don't you guys just love them? They're awesome. Oh, my goodness. That was such a great show today. They were hilarious. I'm just sitting here laughing behind, behind the scenes. They're so awesome. But. You guys know what this means. Somebody said it's always your birthday. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but now we have some giveaways I got to do. Look at me. I was all blushing over here. You guys are making me so happy. <laughs> so let me come over here and let's get our giveaways pulled up because I want to give you guys some stuff today. So, all righty. Let's come on here. Let's get some music going. Does anybody have a birthday going on today? Does anybody have a birthday today? Let me know. Let me know. I want to see. All right. Let me get some birthdays. Or let me get some music. Look at me. Oh, my goodness. Let me get some music going over here. And let's do some giveaways. Okay. What do we have first, you might ask? Today, we are going to be giving away a $100 gift card. So if you are intrigued by all the products that you saw here today, definitely you will have the chance to go on and shop and get $100 off your order. So how awesome is that? And especially after the amazing education, education session and demo that Brent did, I mean, you have to go, you have to go check out some of the products. They are just so awesome. So let's go ahead and spin and see who's going to get $100 off their order today. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. 
I'm seeing all the names. Let's see. Jennifer Hoffman. Congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card. Charlotte Sales said it's her daughter's anniversary. Happy anniversary. That's so exciting. Well, Jennifer, congrats. You have just won a brand new $100 gift card. So as soon as you get that, you can get $100 off your order and shop and get some new notions, maybe stock up on some blades and things like that. So congrats and let's see what is next over here. All right. So I wanted to go ahead and do another one. We know them. We love them. It is our classic, iconic SMP sew mats. Look at those right there. Look at all the colors. They are so awesome. And we have so many different sizes. We've got a collab with Jennifer or Angela Wolf. Oh my goodness. I saw Jennifer's name on here and I just started saying it. But we've got an Angela Wolf collab. We've got the most adorable stars and stripes pattern with the um, American flag on it. We've got that cherry blossom. The cherry blossom is my favorite favorite. I love it so much, but we've got tons of colors and options and we have ones that coordinate with brand colors. So if you are a brother, a brother person, you've got that brother blue. If you're a baby lock, we've got that baby lock gold, you know, all that, all that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and see. And if you win today, you can pick the size that you would like and you can pick the color. So it's all up to you. Maybe you have a theme going on in your sewing room. We want to respect that and we want you to keep up with that theme. So let's go ahead and see who is going to win. I quilt too. Congratulations. So just go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize. Just put that into your web browser and fill out the form that's at the bottom of that page and just put your address in there and all that. And we will go ahead and send it to you. I will let you guys know though with SoFest. Oh, I quote said, I've never won. Congrats. We're very excited for you to win. Oh my goodness. Congrats. All right. But I will say though, with SoFest ending just last week, we do have a little bit of catching up to do with giveaways. Kyle is very busy working on getting all those shipped out to you. So please give him seven days or just give us about seven days to process everything and we will make sure we get that all sent out to you. You guys are very important to us. We want to make sure you guys get those giveaways, but you just got to be patient with us a little bit and we will make sure we get those all out to you. Right, Kyle? That's right. <laughs> he said, that's right. <laughs> all right. Now for my last giveaway today, I thought I would end it. And also I totally forgot to mention it is our 10th episode of Stitch Nation today. How exciting is that? That's so awesome. So thank you guys for being here. Look, Roger's, Roger's partying in the background. <laughs> so we are so happy and excited that you guys have been enjoying this so far. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. So our last giveaway for today is going to be a amazing Singer 3323S sewing machine. It's a great, awesome, basic machine. Say if you're traveling and you just need a smaller machine, this one's super lightweight. So if you have trouble holding, maybe you have a big old machine at home. Maybe you've got a big baby lock quilting machine or a big brother sewing machine and it's a little too heavy for you and you want to start traveling and going to classes and things like that. This will be a great machine to just take with you. It's really light and easy and it's got all your basic stitches on it and gets the job done for you. Or like I always say, if you have grandchildren or, um, you know, kiddos in your life that you want to teach them how to sew, we, we are here to help you and give you a machine to help them learn. All right, so let's go ahead and see who is going to win. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> and I thought we were going to win for a second. Susan Gransberry Nation, congratulations. You have just won a brand new Singer 3323S sewing machine. So if you would like to claim your prize, head to smplive.tv. Just type that into your web browser and fill out the form that is on that website. And we will get you that brand new machine. Awesome. All right, you guys, I'm seeing the hashtag spin the wheel Kennedy now, and I love it. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, you guys. Well... That was our 10th episode of Stitch Nation, and what a way to do it than to have other than, none other than for Moray Cutlery, come on. They are so amazing, and Brent, not only hilarious, but he is so informative and knowledgeable about um, cutting supplies and scissors and blades and all that, and I saw so many comments of people saying, 
I had no idea about this. You know, I, I didn't know that you're supposed to do this and I didn't know you're supposed to do that. So I hope you guys take some of that and take what resonates with you. And maybe you'll step up, it'll, you'll get a little step up in your game after taking care of your um, scissors and cutting supplies. So I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed it today. And with that, make sure you guys tune in for the rest of the week. We've got SMP Live tomorrow. And I think think I'm going to be hopping in and taking over because Blaine is setting sail through the Mexican Riviera. So I I am going to be taking over and hopping on in Blaine's place. So I'm very excited for that. Um, And then Friday, of course, we've got Callista coming on. So again, thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Make sure you guys check out our website for any more details. If you're ever interested in classes, we've got Scan and Cut University coming up all the fun stuff. So make sure you guys head to our website and check out all the fun happenings. And also like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram because we're always trying to keep up with things and post new and exciting products and deals. And of course, with our shows, you just, you know, we, we love all of you coming on here and hanging out with us. So all right, you guys, well, we're gonna go ahead and get back to work over here. I'm gonna go hang out with him over here and we will see you guys tomorrow. Have an amazing rest of your day, guys. Bye.